Okay, guys, okay, guys, this is gonna be uh, of inform informative video on a tank car and the requirements for that tank car once it hits the open rail. The number one thing that needs to be on that tank car is that right there, the plat car. A plat card is required by the NTSB and by OSHA. And the reason why is because if anything happened on the open rail, they want to see that first. So they'll know exactly what's in that tank car and how to resolve any situation. The next thing that needs to be on there is a contact number. If anything happens, they need that contact number. Call it in. Let them know what's going on so that they'll know what's inside this tank car, how much is inside this tank car, and where is it going, and where is it coming from and going to. So that if anything happens, they will inform them that what's in this tank car by the plat car. They inform this emergency number, okay? And the third thing that needs to be required is the weight inside this tank car. NTSB and OSHA requires them to weigh every tank car. It has to be weighed. So they'll know if anything happens, if it busts into a flames, they need to know how much is in this tank car so that either they let it burn out or they can put water on it. So those are the things that they need to have on the tank car. The contact number and the plat car. And they'll know what's inside this tank car by that plat car. If there is no plat card on this tank car, just like this uh, operator, they don't have plat cards on, that means that car is empty. Once the car is loaded, unloaded, they either take the plat card off or they keep it on. Most of the time they keep it on just for the simple fact they want to know, they already know what's been in there. So if they take it back to the chemical plant because it only goes, say for instance, this carrying carrying ethanol, they can either two things, two, two thing, do two things, wash the tank car out or don't worry about washing it out and just reload it with whatever chemical that was in there before. So those are some things that you need to know about a tank car. Weighing the car on my layout. I have decided to put the weigh station on my layout because it is required um, to weigh every car that is loaded going out of the chemical plant. So, um, I'm gonna go prototypical on everything from from weighing the car to throwing it in the outbound, which is the outbound track right here, to um, um, writing down uh, the switch list on the board which I got up there, I started doing my switch lists on the board. Um, that board really comes in handy because I don't have to write everything on paper. I just use the board to write it down on. And the way I do that is, this is my spot and drops at the chemical plant. This right here is what's currently at the chemical plant right now. Everything is here at the chemical plant and at the wash rack. So, there's the wash rack right there. 4749 is uh, an unloading dock. Uh, 3836 is a loading dock. 23 and 25 is an unloading. And 1214 and 16 is a loading. So, there's going to be five cars that need to be weighed coming out of the chemical plant. And there's my reserve cars. The reserve cars are the cars that I don't want to touch in case of an actual emergency. If the plant goes, if the cars can't come back from over at the closet branch and we can't get them here or a snow weather situation, 
we will have cars on reserve just in case to get them out uh, to load and get them out the door. But the way station, let's go over here to the other side. This is where the way station is going to be at. Okay, this cork bed represents the way station, and so how this goes is this. We'll take a car, train of cars. That's coming from the plant, and set them on the wear. And I will do this for every tank car that comes from the plant. The light weight is the total weight of the tank car. That is the light weight, or the tear weight. Okay, that is the tear weight. The total weight is the weight of what's inside the car plus the tear weight. But when she want to get her, well, it was a lady that did it where we was working at. To get the, the total weight, the tear weight, which is the light weight, plus what's in the car, you take the light weight and you subtract it from the total weight to get your actual amount, what's in the car. And they did that all with electronic device on the wear inside the building. And I could actually see the car actually weighing a certain amount. She would type in the light weight. She'll type in the light weight, and then the car would lay on weight, uh, be on the uh, the weigh state, the wear. Once it's on the wear, this car is still moving, and you can see on the on the electronic device, the electronic wear, that the numbers will go up and down and up and down because of uh, it's swaying. Now we did lock it down with the air and brakes. It's still gonna move. Not so much, but it's gonna move. And what she does, or sh what she does when, when I was there, and once that car settled down, after she put the tear weight in, it would give her her, her amount. And it's always plus or minus 10 pounds. So it wasn't a complete 100% accurate weight, but they had enough to uh, go through, go by. So once that car was done, we would shove the car. We would shove the car so much, uncouple right here, drag the car on the wear. Then the other car, I gotta put it back on the track. The other car will be right here. Close the angle cock. Open, keep the angle cock open on this one so it'll blow the air and it'll lock the car down. Once the car is locked down, she'll get the tear weight. She'll get the limit total weight. It'll settle down. she get the weight. And voila, she's done. It only takes but 30 seconds for her to, uh, I say for her, it was like 10 to 15 seconds. And she'll give us a thumbs up that she got the weight. So we'd be like, uh, shove about three feet to make a join. We'll shove, shove three feet. We'll shove here. And then we'll say shove again two feet. We'll shove that car. And then we'll call the red zone. We'll open the angle cock on this car. This car is already angle cock open. Open air. This angle cock is still closed. So we'll just do a shove. Because we're shoving on the brakes. Close the angle cock on this car. Keep the angle cock open on this car. Uncouple, make sure it's off the off the way. Now sometimes these cars had the tendency to move every once in a while. That's the reason why we kept the brakes on them. So just like that. That's why we had to tie a brake on the back car. We didn't tie it completely, just enough to control the train from moving. So we'll all close the angle clock on the engine, the engine to back up, and then we'll get the tear weight. She'll get the tear weight and she will get the total weight and that's it. We'll shove, clear the red zones, shove, clear the red zones, drag the train, take it to the outbound.
and that is how we did the way way each and every car and when I say the one thing I hated was weighing cars I hated I hated weighing cars it is the most grueling thing you have to do and if you have 14 cars sitting there to be weighed oh god it is exhausting and it's boring but in a way it's kind of fun because I'm working for the railroad I was so excited back then so that is how you weigh a car it's not fun and then sometimes when you blow the air at the wrong time and then you have to sit there and wait for the air to build back up oh, thinking about it just give me it's, it's, it gives me flashbacks of frustration so that's pretty much it on weighing cars now weighing the resin cars was already done electronically by the solos uh, they had these huge towers chemical uh, silo towers and I mean they was tall towers and what they did was each t they don't weigh the way they do the towers are by footage uh, the silos are done by footage from the base of the cone to the top of the cone would probably be two to three feet and then from the top of the cone all the way up the silo could be another uh, uh, 16 20 feet depending on the size of the top uh, the the solo say for instance let's take those uh, uh, tanks back there on the structure that structure tank could probably hold 16 feet of of, of resin okay so let's let's do this let's use this as an example okay so we have a solo here that's over a hopper and as you can see the base of the cone from here up to there is probably five or six ten feet okay that solo is a big solo so that so that cone is probably ten to fifteen uh, oh I say about five to six feet of uh, of resin in it and each resin footage is uh, they already have an idea of each resin will weigh about each foot of resin will weigh about five to six pounds okay and but you have a uh, 20 foot solo 20 foot solo that has you know a huge cone base a su solo base so if you think about it the damn the damn cone could fill one pocket and then a certain area will fill the next pocket and then the next pocket and then the next pocket and then the next pocket they only fit, use one per pocket so if you think about it each pocket has two open gates on it because it, we have a four pocket hopper these two is for the one pocket these two are for the second pocket. These two are for the third pocket, and then these two for the fourth pocket. And there is a separation per pocket. It's all separated. They have um, a line, wherever that line is, represent where they separate that pocket, okay? They're not all together, they're separated. So, um, That's how they load the hoppers. They don't load, put loaders on each and every single one. They only use one per pocket, one per pocket. So they have a loader here, they have a loader here, they have a loader here, and they have a loader here, depending on how they got it shoved in. And like I said, every foot would represent either three to five to 10 pounds. So if you had a 20 foot solo, and you had like what each 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 footage was about about so many pounds then you'll get an idea of how much t uh, pounds go in each car and that's just an example guys that was just an example don't take that to heart so that's how they would weigh a resin car 
what we did, what we would on the weekends, they would give a, a set of hoppers that we need to check to make sure they had the correct weight. So we would take them to the weigh station and weigh them. Be mindful. We didn't do the hoppers all the time. We only did the hoppers if it was required to check them. Okay? So majority of the time, we would, we would take hoppers to the weigh station to weigh them, but the, the electronic wear inside the silos gave them, gave them an idea of weight plus or minus 10 to 15 pounds and then majority of that we would go back and check the car just in case so I'm throwing something new at y'all and it's all about the weigh station uh, it is very 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 important that the tank car is uh, weighed and chemical hoppers that are weighed like resin uh, any type of resin any type of plastic pellet uh, some cars that carry uh, 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 explo highly reactive explosive in ho uh, hoppers uh, potassium nitrate has to be weighed has to be weighed, it has to be plaqued, it has because it's a it's a highly it's a dangerous chemical uh, resin. Uh, it's not a resin, it's a powder for fertilizer. Uh, and it went in rail cars and those cars set a certain area in a train. It does not sit directly behind the engine. They always put those in the middle or they put them in the end. But they never put those tank hoppers close to the engine. That is a number one no-no. Especially when you see a hopper train carrying uh, different types of chemical fertilizer or whatever. So, um, I hope this was informative. Uh, I am going to put the weigh station on my layout sometime between now, uh, tonight, and next week. Uh, so y'all will get to see that in action. Um, is it required for a chemical plant? Yes. Is it required for a refinery on your layout? Yes. Uh, does it enhance your switching on your layout? Oh yes, it really does. Uh, so I know I'm going to hear everybody say, well, it's not prototypical. It is important on your layout. It is prototypical. You cannot have a way station on your layout if you're doing a chemical plant or a refinery or anything of that sort because it is required not only by NTSB but by OSHA that every car that's carrying a chemical has to be weighed, has to be plaqued, has to have a notification number, has to have all of those things before it hit the open rail. That tank car better has that number on it. That tank car better have that number on it or a placard on it. And it better have some type of road number to, to indicate what, so we can know what's in that car manifest. So some of the things uh, I'm throwing at you is actually for real it's no joke those things need to be on the tank car because tank cars carry some very dangerous dangerous chemicals out on the road rail and those things are required to be on that tank car all right so i hope this was informative i hope y'all learned something i hope that if you are planning on putting a chemical layout or refinery any type of thing that involves a tank car being loaded you need to have that weight station on there. It is required. Well, it's required for me. Well, it's not required if you don't want it on your layout. But it enhances your layout to give you that 100% prototypical layout. But I'm going to go prototypical on making sure that every all the operations of the rail on this layout is on the layout. So that's that. I hope this, like I said, I hope this was informative. 
I hope I gained some insight about the way station, why you need it, why it's required, and uh, I'll see y'all later. Until then, y'all take care.